Okay, today what I'd like to go over are some of the basics of the sword. Ways of holding the sword and drawing the sword and cutting with the sword. So um, we'll have to go over a lot of different basics with it first. So the first basic is how to wear the sword. Uh, typically with a drawing blade sword, that's a dull edged sword or bato jitsu yaido. Um, you're gonna put it on the left hand side, tucked in under your belt. On, on the way you're wearing it, in Japan when I was working with Mashida Sensei, a sword master, he said that it literally will come out um, for the suba to be in line with your belt. So it looks like it's at a, uh, an angle coming out. So that as I step forward, the sword goes into a, a straight position towards where my opponent would be. If I step back, the sword is at the side. So it has a slight angle here. The cord or the sageo is gonna go under that part of the sword and there's a quick release method for this. I'm gonna take uh, about two thirds way up on the sageo and tuck it under my belt and bring a little tiny loop up here. Then I'm gonna take the other edge that's still below, tuck it into that loop and pull the other end down and snug it in nice and tight. That way, this is a quick release method. If I needed to take this off fast, I just pull that release. This will all come right off and out quickly. And I could take this whole entire apparatus out if I needed to. So two thirds of the way, tuck it underneath, pull that loop up through, put this other cord from the bottom in and then snug it down. Now I have the release and I can pull it all out with one single pull. So that's a way of wearing the scale. There are many ways. This is just one of them, but this is a really good basic way to put it in your belt and to wear it. So I have the scale on, my sword's in the belt, and this is the basic way that you would hold the sword in a standard position. The next thing would be, what do I do with my hands when this is in my belt? So typically, the sword would have enough um, on the end here in the koyuchi so that it wouldn't just slide out easily when they were riding or when they were walking down the street. And so it's slightly up at an angle. Instead of being down, that can start to be where the sword would just easily slide out. So if it's at a slight angle up, it's gonna stay in naturally. But actually, if you're walking with it, you would have your left hand with the thumb just holding on it, resting there as you're walking along. Um, one of the ways that a fight might occur was they would break this suba, pushing it forward and crack open the sword. It's kind of like drawing your gun and being at the ready. So this is where it's already broken through that, that uh, barrier where it holds the sword in tight and it's easy, easy to just pull the sword out quickly then and have it come out. So if you broke that, that, that bond there, that meant that it was on. So they would just hold their thumb on top so that they could be walking through and they could hold their sword up and get through the market and whatever else they needed to do. So the other hand was just at the ready, able to shake hands or do whatever else you needed to do. And if you had to switch hands to reach for something, you would hold your sword with the other hand. So those are the basic ways of wearing the sword in the belt, attaching the sigeo or the cord, and then walking with this by having the left hand on top and the thumb in that, that holding position.